What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, the Uncrowned Otaku. We got something a little bit different today. Um, I just got done watching a K drama on Netflix called 2521. And I, it's 16 episodes. Each episode is about an hour to an hour and a half long. So it is, a, it is a bit of a ride. And I got mixed feelings about it. Because in the beginning, it started off with this dude who is well, well past graduate. He's four years younger than the girl he's um, interacting with. And she's still in high school. She's trying to do fencing, and this dude's trying to get his life together. And I like the I like the main character because he starred in um he's the guy from Startup. Y'all remember homie from Startup um Dosan Nam Dosan. He's the star in this one too. So I was watching it because of him. But I was low key getting like weird vibes because he was he was so old, so much older than the girl that I was like yo I don't think I don't think you should be talking to a high school lady. We don't need to cut this out. But of course, as the show goes on, she ages, and by the end, she she's of legal age to you know be be talking to. She she can drink and stuff, so so it was cool. It was cool by the end. But I have I have mixed feelings about the ending. Like we watch sixteen episodes of them caring for each other, being there in their extreme times of needs, sharing in the good, kind of sharing in the bad, and we watch their friends grow as well. The one of the dudes, Jin Ji Woon, went from just a, a clueless, dumb heartthrob to owning a fashion brand that that's wanted by millions. Class president had to drop out because she saw the injustice that people who weren't as smart as her had to suffer. Teachers were no longer able, were no longer legally able to hit kids, but teachers were still hitting kids. She spoke up about it and was punished for it. She didn't apologize, so she had to drop out, and now she starts working in show business. She's working behind the scenes on game shows and stuff. Meanwhile, um, Becky Jen, who started off downtrodden, his family went through a crisis. Now he's the one that's trying to bring them back together. He stumbles into being a reporter, while the girl he's, he's trying low-key courting, Hido, not Hido, she becomes a, a, a gold medalist in fencing. Her rival, Koyu Dem, turns into her best friend. But but what I'm really conflicted about is Nahido and, and Becky Jen. The relationship between the two, because they do start dating. Oh, I guess I should have let off with spoilers. It'll be in the title, spoilers. It'll be in the title, but spoilers from here on out as well. They start dating, and because Becky Jen's a reporter, Hido should have known. Her mom is a reporter. Her mom couldn't make it to her dad's own funeral. And when I say her dad, like the mom's husband. She couldn't make it to her husband's funeral because it was a news flash. She had to prioritize her career at this point, which I completely, looking at from the outside, I completely understand. Like, her husband is gone. She realized, like, there's nothing I can do. If I let this chance pass me, I'll never make that anchor position. They need to know they can count on me. She put her professional career in front because she knew that's what her daughter would have needed, too. Her daughter's going to need support, money, all that kind of stuff. So, yes, she missed on life events, but that's because the job is so demanding. Hido grew up without having her mom in her life majority of the time, honestly. And she turns around and starts dating a reporter. And her mom brings that up to her. And as we see in episode 15 and 16, as it starts to, to spiral, Becky Jen has to be on call at all times. So he's constantly late to dates. He's constantly canting on Hido. And they make plans to go on a, a couple's vacation, just them two. And he promises he'll do it. But of course, you know, the... They brought tragedy into it, which I could, I understand as well. And during this time, because it was set in the past and they would flash forward to the future. So during this time, it was, it was during 9-11. The plane struck. Becky Jen had to go to New York. And he had a tough time over there. Like surrounded by all that death and interviewing the grieving people and the survivors who had survivors guilt. He was in a bad place mentally where he couldn't even accept Hido's, you know, her support. Because he looked at it like, these people are going through so much, and here I am. I have you cheering me up. I don't deserve this. So he's shutting Hito out, and Hito's like, well, my support's no longer reaching you. This can't work. So when Becky Jen comes back, you know, they, they kind of, it's kind of unspoken that they're going to break up, but stuff happens, and they end up meeting up, and, and Becky Jen is like, you know, we know how this goes. I didn't want to see you because we know how this goes. And instead of, from such a beautiful friendship to a, to a good relationship, instead of it ending amicably they spew so much venom at each other now he do low-key blames becky jen becky jen is like can you see it from my point but no there's no point to be seen from your side and after they break up in the, the worst of ways 
you know, Ahito and, and Becky Jin to an extent are both like, that shouldn't have ended this way. And what was heartwarming to me is not Hido writes in her journal all the stuff she, she wanted to say, she wished she would have said to him, but she leaves her journal on the bus and she never gets that back. Lo and behold, Becky Jen is the person who finds that journal. And after reading that, even though they didn't go on a couple's retreat, Nahido went alone. After saying she didn't, she went alone. She read the card Becky Jen had seen. Becky Jen read everything she was journaling while he was in New York. He understood exactly where she was coming from and why she came to the conclusion of, you know, we, we don't, this kind of love isn't good for both of us. We don't fit anymore. So Becky Jen wrote one last page in the diary and gave it to the bookshop dude from episode one and two, the bookshop owner, to give to Nahido because he knows Hido visited that bookshop frequently. So we 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 flash forward and Nahido's married. She has a kid. And the whole time we knew she, she had a kid, but we didn't know who she married. And that's low-key where I'm pissed off because we still don't know who she married. Like, WTF, get clue me in. Was it one of the fencing people we saw? Maybe the dude that she was walking away with before one of her tournaments? Like, who, WTF, who did she marry? Who is this girl's dad? The girl that's reading Nahido's journal. Who is her papa? And low-key, she, when she gets her journal back, because, you know, time passes and we're at the current adult Hido. Daughter gives her the journal, promises she didn't read it. Nah, Nahido reads it, reads the final page, Yijin penned. She goes to their little love tunnel, and we see a, a alternate timeline of what Nahido wished could have happened, where she enters the tunnel and she says, sorry, Becky, Jen, I kept you waiting all this time. Kind of like projecting a version of him, saying like, Becky, Jen, he stopped in this moment. And, and Nahido's like, this is what I wanted to tell you so that now we can both move on past everything. Granted, I, I feel like they have. Becky Jen is the is the anchor. He took over Hido's mom's spot. Hido's mom even, even recommended him. So he's doing great in his professional career. Hido won tons of gold medals, got married, has a little one. Is cool with her mom now, so she's doing good too. But it was nice to see that, that closure at the end. But man, I really wish Becky Jen and Hido got together. We went through this whole journey, and it, it is very realistic. We went through this whole journey, and it really hit home that sometimes, even with the best intentions, even with an unwavering support and love, that sometimes that's not enough. Life's going to pull you in different directions, and that's honestly what happened. Life hit them both, and there was just no way for, for them to come together. Becky Jim was being pulled to the left. Hito was being pulled to the right. Hito had tournaments overseas. When Becky Jen could get time off, Hito was gone. When Hito was home, Becky Jen was gone and had to be on call constantly. It was just, they still love each other. And we saw the report. Becky Jen, his first time being the anchor, interviews Hito, who wins a gold medal. And Hito, you know, she wishes him the best. And she says that he'll always have her support. And him likewise. Even though they aren't in a relationship, they'll always have each other's support no matter what. That's honestly a ride or die for me. Like, we aren't together, but I kill for you. You feel me? That's kind of the vibe I got. And I really wish they would have got together, man. That was the only thing where it made it so realistic that you want it to happen, but sometimes life just says it can't happen. Yes, y'all have these feelings, but there's nothing you can do with these feelings because life won't let your feelings blossom together. But on the opposite side, Ji Wong and Ko Yi Rim, they got together. They got engaged. You know, Ji Wong is running a successful business. Ko Yi Rim is running a successful fencing class for the young ones. They are doing their thing. I wish we could have saw their wedding. I wish we could have saw the friends in their grown-up versions as well. We saw Hido and, and Hido's daughter and Hido's mom. I wish we could have saw the grown-up version of the friends too. That was the only thing that I was kind of, I was also kind of like, eh, show, show me what, what they're doing. Show me where they're at. Song Wan is, is potentially dating Becky Jen's little brother. Show me that. I want to know what came of that too. But overall, it was a, a solid, I didn't start it, it was a rough watch, so I'm going to give it a, a 7 out of 10. The ending, fantastic, hooked me in, got me in the feels, like I, I almost cried too, I almost, I, I hate to admit that, but I almost cried because I was like, man, how could they not work when you can tell both of them wanted so much. In their final, they did come together for a final more amicable breakup. Where, you know, Becky Jen, he he reached down and tied her shoes. And that was symbolic because he's been looking out for her feet for a long time. No foot fetish stuff, but he been, he been taking care of her. So that was symbolic. They both cried and smiled and stuff. But, man, when you saw it, it was just like, yeah, this it's a wrap for them. But they, they got the feels. 
But what did y'all think? 25-21 K-drama on Netflix. Comment down below. Let me know how you thought about it. Uh, Uncrowned Kingdom. I think you brought Uncrowned Otaku. Becky Jen and Hito didn't work out. But I promise you, the kingdom with this heat, with this fire, with these flames, we gonna be alright. I'm out of here, y'all. Be easy.